technology changes, etc., does inherently bring certain level of inertia, which essentially limits your ability to serve the needs of the business and your customers. So, hence, you know, the platform-centric strategy. Welcome to the Agile Digital Transformation Podcast, where we explore different aspects of digital transformation and digital experience with your host, Tim Butera, Content and Community Manager at Agile Drop. Hello, everyone. Thanks for tuning in. Our guest today is Satish Setaramia, CEO of Agverb, an Infosys company that's leading in the development of digital platforms. Today, Satish and I will be talking about platform-centric digital strategies and how a platform-centric strategy can help businesses redefine growth and unlock innovation. Welcome to the podcast, Satish. We're very, very happy to have you with us today as our guest. Anything you'd like to add before we dive into the conversation? Hi, Tim. Great to be joining this conversation. I look forward to it. And let's just a quick introduction of Edgeverb. You know, we are a wholly owned subsidiary of Infosys, one of the largest IT services and consulting firm in the world. And Edgeverb is in the business of creating and commercializing world-class digital platforms. And we have digital platforms in the banking space, which is called as Pinnacle. We have a platform in the AI space, which is called AI Next. We got a platform in the supply chain space, which is called Trade Edge. So that's what we do for business. We have a global clientele of you know, top 400, 500 companies, global 2,000 firms across all geographies and across different industries. So interesting times. Tim, let's get started. Yeah, thank you for this extended intro. So, so based on, you know, to, to kind of set the stage and, and you, obviously this is a good starting point to, to start the conversation. What exactly is a platform-centric digital strategy? How is it different from, you know, other, other kinds of digital strategy, other approaches? Yeah, so, uh, well, very basic. And we've all used to uh, be seeing products, leveraging products, software products for many, many decades and years. But truly, you know, with the advent of internet and so many, you know, auxiliary technologies around the internet, the possibility of platforms emerge, right? And a platform where a multiple set of technologies come together to solve complex problems, right? And if you were to look at Amazon as a company, it leverages one of the highly scalable, cost-effective platforms to drive their business. It's not necessarily a product. It's actually a true platform. If you were to look at the same thing for Airbnb, or if you look at Uber, or any one of these, they're all pure platform, digital platform-driven companies. I'm using the word digital in the sense because it is software. You Mm -hmm. can have other outside of software platforms Mm -hmm. as well. So this is purely dedicated from a, it's coming, value creation happens from software. So it is a digital platform. Um, So platforms are, you know, fundamentally transformative in nature. They can bring ecosystems uh, together to create higher order of value proposition. These platforms, once scaled, can operate at a much lower cost than traditional software products that we are used to. The integration technologies and et cetera, et cetera, are far more simple in in a platform-centric approach. So anyway, Tim, that's simple one-on-one, my view on what the digital platform would kind of look like. And when we're talking platforms, are we talking about like a unified platform or different platforms for different use cases, such as, you know, a customer data platform in combination with, with other technologies, or does it really depend case by case? It's generally unified from a technology mm-hmm. perspective, which actually is one of the reasons why platforms become interesting and platforms will become necessary for future if you will, innovation for most of the enterprises. Look, historically, there has been an era of ERP systems, which have dominated the industry and delivered in a certain level of success and uplift from a business perspective, standardized processes, et cetera, et cetera, brought best practices from various different companies. Now, those are all value that these ERP systems have delivered incredibly well. At the same time, you know, there are many cons that the ERP systems also had inherently brought in certain level of silos in terms of data Mm -hmm. uh, or uh, functional silos, uh, digital silos, if you will. And uh, while standardization was the norm, 
it also, you know, kind of hampered agility and innovation in many ways, right? And so that's one. And second is, you know, there have been a whole host of technologies that have been introduced into the enterprise software landscape over the last 10 years. You know, it may be automation related, it may be experience related technologies, you know, it could be now the recent ones is around the AI, which has come in and, and so on and so forth. So there's so many different technologies that has come into the landscape of all these enterprises. The, the question really is, how will enterprise respond to the velocity at which innovation needs to be delivered to keep up with competition and the market needs and the highly demand, demanding customer needs with all these disparate technologies coming together to have to integrate. So this is exactly where, in the context of an enterprise, a platform comes into play. You know, where a platform will inherently by, you know, come integrated, pre-integrated with all these technologies, you know, all the way from data to AI, to automation capabilities, to experience capabilities, all in a stack, which is purpose-driven to solve a problem, right? Mm -hmm. And as you mentioned, customer engagement, customer experience is one such space. But if you were to look at uh, the under the hood of what really takes to deliver you know, improve net promoter value or, you know, improve customer satisfaction, et cetera, and the kind of platform that you need in technology, you will need all of the things that I just mentioned. Mm -hmm. But what if the, all of this is delivered as a packaged offering? And, and that's how, you know, it speeds up and accelerates one's ability to drive innovation. Mm -hmm. And also what has happened is now AI, if any, introduction of AI has made this even more important. Right, and uh, because AI sits, if you will, on top of many of these very different technologies. And as I mentioned earlier, if there are so many data silos and functional silos, and the AI actually has to ride on top of it, you need a unifying platform to bring all of this together to enable AI-led value proposition, right? So that's how I would uh, kind of phrase my answer to your question. Yeah, it makes a lot of sense because, you know, we talked about how, how initially these platforms could introduce a lot of silos, data silos, and, you know, good data usage and good data management is the prerequisite for effective uh, AI implementation. So I can't really see, you know, a use case where, where an enterprise wants to, wants to include AI into their strategy, but if their data is not on point, if there are silos, if there are discrepancies, if there's anything that's, that's, not, that's not on point, then that AI implementation is bound to, you know, maybe not fail 100% of the cases, but it's, it's, it can't be as successful as with an on-point data strategy. So I assume that a unified platform would kind of address and take care of, of these challenges. That's exactly right. And AI Next platform that Edgeverve has recently launched is trying to address exactly this opportunity. Right. And we do expect him that with AI, obviously, it's a pretty disruptive technology. There is uh, absolutely no doubt about that. And, and we, you know, we believe that this also creates tremendous opportunities for enterprises in terms of how you know, they will be able to serve their customers better, how they will be able to innovate products better, understand the world around far better, et cetera, et cetera. And also make sure that the human resource that you have within your enterprises is focused on the most important innovative things rather than doing things that systems anyway could do. So it really is moving towards a world where, you know, we're saying, how can you, you know, bring intelligence to workflow? How can you bring intelligence into execution tasks, right? And bring intelligence, more software driven intelligence, right? And, 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 and that's the, you know, that's that's the, the evolution that we're seeing. And in that context, a platform like the AI Next is something that we see as very, very useful for enterprises to really make their enterprises become AI first, if you will. Mm -hmm. So unlocking innovation is probably the main benefit of, of going with a platform-centric digital strategy. But what are some other important benefits that, that such an approach will bring enterprises? And you know, maybe where else can they drive value from a platform-centric strategy? So let's see if you go back to what I just said earlier, where you know there is a choice of having you know 20, 30 different technologies all 
integrated, working with 20, 30 different vendors, where enterprises that traditionally have invested heavily in driving integration and delivering value on top of them, there is a certain TCO, if you will, total cost of ownership that it takes to bring and deliver value on this plethora of technologies versus a platform-centric approach where they're all completely pre-integrated internally, essentially would mean there is going to be an X factor in terms of reduction in cost. That is one. Second is because of this pre-integrated platform-centric approach, you know, the, the time to value we believe will decrease dramatically. You know, that's the, the second benefit that we see. Uh, the, the other thing is, you know, if any, any software system, same as you would appreciate, takes support and maintenance, and there's so much that you do once you really put it in play. And all of these become so much more simpler in a platform-centric approach, right? And, 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 and let's just, you know, in fact, history, there's been so many examples. I mentioned Amazon earlier. If you were to look back at somewhere around 2000, 2001, and prior to that, Amazon enterprise was nothing but full of products. And, and, and it was a conscious decision that was made at that time to pivot towards a platform strategy to actually realize the vision of Amazon and scale Amazon to become such a powerful delivery engine, right? Which gives not only scale, but, but, but in, 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 see again, the combination of velocity and variety, if you will, all these things come with exponential challenges. And the only way to do that is platform. So if you look at Amazon's own trajectory on how they build their enterprise architecture, one will very clearly see that they made a conscious effort to move away from a productized silo technology implementation to true platform strategies where it's released, you know, to deliver different value for the business. So, so I think this is this is how you know we see value creation happening. And, and this is pretty universal in, in, in the sense that it is not limited to any one function. Mm -hmm. You know, there are companies we are working with him, which are using the same platforms to transform their entire financial processing. You know, they're more backend related. We're working with many telecommunication companies, which are leveraging the same platform to transform their customer experience. There are many companies leveraging the same platform to transform their logistics and supply chain related operations. So, you know, this kind of an approach can be applied in any of the environments in solving different kinds of business problems. So it's not specific to an area in, in an enterprise. Yeah, I think Amazon was a great example. Obviously, everybody knows it. A lot of people probably, you know, rely on, on Amazon Web Services it, it, to, to some extent or another. But I also really like the point about faster time to market and how that's unlocked through a platform-centric strategy because we talked before about unlocking innovation. But unlocking innovation only works if you're if you're quick at you know at rolling it out and at offering that innovation to the public you know if you if you innovate but then it, you don't don't push it to the market quickly enough and the, you know there's so much competition that you just can't really do anything with that innovation if you're slow so so i, I would say that is speeding up the time to market is is very very close in terms of the value it brings to the innovation that it unlocks absolutely and that's what we're seeing actually happening in many of our customers, right? And they're, in fact, one of the telecommunication companies that we are working with, you know, has taken customer service from a traditional operating structure into Uberization of customer service, right? And, and it's a very different way of thinking how to drive customer operations into the future. So these technologies are not incremental in nature. They can, they fundamentally change the operating model of companies, which were built on ERP systems in using these new age technologies into a very different operating structure one. Secondly is also, you know, the same technologies and the platform centric approach enables enterprise to collaborate with their value chain partners in a, in a very different way, allowing them to reorganize value networks, right? So innovation is not only in the context of their enterprise, innovation can also be in the context of their overall value chain, mm -hmm. right? How do you really conceptualize your product from, from your upstream vendors to downstream distributors all the way to the end customer, right? The entire value chain can be reorganized using these kind of disruptive technologies. And that's, that's what we see these kind of platform, digital platform centric approach has the power to power these kinds of uh, disruptions and opportunities. Mm -hmm. 
Uh, did I catch that right? Uh, did you say uh, Uberization of customer service? Mm -hmm. That's oh, right. Can you explain? I mean, I, I have I have an idea of, of what that might mean, but can, can you explain it uh, so that so that we're all on well, the same page? Yeah, it is really about you know you have you know it's it's the same concept of can you engage Gen X people, Gen Z people for a few hours to do what you want them to do? Mm -hmm. Can you engage? moms in the house who are sitting who can dedicate four hours in a week to do something meaningful to you. How do you harness the power of people who have limited time to deliver a consistent output for a purpose-driven company, right? So this is really Uberization. It's about engaging an ecosystem of human resource on a need-be basis in a consistent manner to deliver output, right? So that's essentially Uberization. It, is, it gives you the ability to manage spikes, it gives you the ability to really, you know, draw down on resources or draw, you know, or, or literally you have the flexibility, right? It, it, it's a flex model that comes to play. And uh, not only will it do that, but you have to do that without compromising on your customer service. So, so that's what it is. Oh, I'm glad I asked the question. I think that, that this was a very important. It's the first time that I'm hearing this phrase, but it makes a lot of sense. And, and I think that it's applicable in, in a lot of situations related to, to the digital and digital transformation and digital strategies. So, so it's definitely one, one that I'll keep in mind and I'll use more often going forward. Thank you for sharing it this is, with us. Well, this is actually, this is, this is credit to our customer and credit to their innovation. And I'm just saying that this is how they see uh -huh. their is transforming and uberization of customer service. Oh, that's that's really cool. I was actually going to ask if you can share some some interesting stories or lessons learned from your work with customers, and you already read my mind and already anticipated it and already answered it. So perfect. I'm I'm also interested in maybe maybe if you have some top tips or some some key considerations that that enterprises should keep in mind where if they want to develop a successful, effective platform centric digital strategy. Yeah, one is I think I think it's first acknowledging that working with multiple technologies and integrating them creates certain level of inertia. Mm -hmm. you know, your ability to move fast, your ability to keep up with change and manage change, technology changes, etc., uh, does inherently bring certain level of inertia, which essentially limit your ability to serve the needs of the business and your customers. So hence, you know, the, the platform-centric strategy. What's also important is to make sure that whatever platform that one embraces, it, it's set for scale, you know, because the when you look at AI or any of these, you know, technologies that have come to bearing in the last 10 years or maybe 15 years, a lot of them have been POCs and point implementations, et cetera. Very few have literally been scaled across enterprise, mass adoption, democratization of it, a citizen developer-centric you know, approach, et cetera, et cetera. All these things are still huge opportunities. And that's because it's, it's, it's one is to enable a platform-centric approach. Second is to scale this. So second is it is important to keep in mind that you to that you take a an approach that will allow you to really scale this across your enterprise, across your functions, across various organizations, et cetera. The, the other is really around the, the value that I mentioned. It's important to start somewhere in one of the functions. The best way to do that is to pick the function that you believe it has the highest complication in terms of technologies and where a platform-centric approach will simplify. And, and take that as, as a starting point and embrace that and, and implement it in one place. And then and from there, you can really spawn off. The other is around data. You know, we spoke about data in the platform-centric approach. It's very important to understand as much as structured data has quite evolved and that whole area is pretty mature, thanks to even the ERP systems, the whole, you know, and so on. We got quite a bit of structured data, but we also know, Tim, that a huge amount of unstructured data exists in enterprises mm -hmm. and in the ecosystem that they deal with. So to make the platform-centric strategy really successful, it's important to understand that, that you have a game plan to handle your unstructured data and manage unstructured data and, uh, and bring all of them together because the combination of unstructured data and the structured data that maybe exists in your enterprise is the combination of that 
is what's going to really power your AI, is really going to uh, enable contextual AI building, right? So, so one is around data, the other is around scale, and then thirdly is to pick one area where that probably you see as the highest complexity of technology and you know, go with a platform-centric approach. Those are some really great tips. I think uh, very valuable, very practical, especially, especially the last one, right? Because often if you identify two things that are important, you might, you might you know, lose momentum and may, maybe waste a lot of resources trying to pursue both goals. But this last tip was very on point about you know, deciding which one is more important for your particular case and investing more in that one. I think that, that, that that's you know, one thing that, that people really need to hear sometimes. So yeah, thank you so much, Satish, for the great insights, the great tips, a great conversation. I really enjoyed it. Just before we start wrapping it up, if anybody listening right now would like to learn more about you, learn more about Edgeverb, or uh, want to connect with you, what's the best way to do all that? Well, it was wonderful, Tim, talking to you. And yeah, so edgeverb.com is our company website. AI Next is the platform that I mentioned, which is really the platform that we're offering to large enterprises to really scale and engage in the AI journey. And, you know, hopefully it was very interesting and hopefully some tips to some of your listeners. Thank you very much for inviting me. Yeah, so make sure to add uh, everything in the show notes for easy access for listeners. And yes, yeah, Satish, I, I also really enjoyed it. I, it was really great having you as our guest. Uh, thank you for joining us. Thank you. And to our listeners, that's all for this episode. Have a great day, everyone, and stay safe. Thanks for tuning in. If you'd like to check out our other episodes, you can find all of them at agiledrop.com slash podcast, as well as on all the most popular podcasting platforms. Make sure to subscribe so you don't miss any new episodes, and don't forget to share the podcast with your friends and colleagues.